Hello everybody. So today we're going to be t uh, looking at a game of snake being played with the minimax algorithm. Alright, so let's just run the code and see what happens. Alright, so this game is being played completely by the computer using the algorithm. I am not touching the keyboard. And as you can put, see, the computer plays this relatively well. And the best part about the minimax algorithm is that this is not game specific. So the minimax algorithm can be used to play any game. This is not like some sort of snake specific pathfinding algorithm being used or anything. You, this mini, the minimax algorithm is used in various games as well as two player games such as tic-tac-toe and chess. All right, so let's see how this is all coded. Okay, so first of all, we just have a direction. So first I'm gonna go over how the snake game itself is coded really quickly, and you can just skip ahead to see how specifically the minimax algorithm plays it. All right, so for the snake game, we first of all just have a direction class, which is just an uh, enumerator with four possible values, up, down, right, or left, just creating our own data type basically for directions. Um, now if I just go to the bottom, we can look at our main event loop, which is this. So first of all, we do an action or a new frame every 200 milliseconds, and we can do this using the built-in Pygame clock. All right, so every 200 milliseconds, it re-renders the screen um, with Pygame, so it does the game.draw function, which runs all the pi game draw things associated with the snake and the fruit as well as resets the screen using the screen dot fill okay so first of all these four lines are used to get the best direction to move the snake in for that specific frame or for that specific turn we're going to be just using those two names in um, interchangeably so for that specific frame it gets the best direction to move the snake in using this minimax algorithm um, and then it accordingly turn moves the snake or does a frame in of the game in that direction moving the snake in that direction and of course it draws it all right so let's look at the game class really quickly so our game class just contains a fruit object a snake object and in each frame or each turn it so since it has a score variable it adds on to the score whatever this snake turn does so this snake turn returns a number which is how much to increment the score by now let's look at the snake class so first of all the fruit class is very simple so other than the draw which draws it we just have a generate fruit of method which just assigns the location of the fruit to a random cell in the grid and then we have our snake class so for a turn for any specific turn um, depending on the direction it's going to it appends something to its it appends a new cell to its tail or its body which is represented as a 2d array of grid positions of the different cells that make up the snake so depending on the direction it's moving in it appends uh, a grid location so that uh, at that new position that it's moving into. And then accordingly, it removes the first value of the tail so that it looks as if the snake is moving one value. So it appends something to the end, a new, um, a new value, and then removes the first tail value. So the snake moves. But if it hits a fruit, it returns 10, meaning it wants to add 10 to the score to the game score and it does not in fact remove the first value in the tail so the snake actually ends up growing longer if the snake collides with itself with itself or goes out of bounds of the grid it returns minus 1000 so the score instantly becomes negative and it's indicated as the user losing all right so that was a quick overview of the snake game and how we've implemented it let's now look at the important part, this minimax algorithm. All right, so let's let's see how we would code the minimax algorithm up. 
All right, so this I'm just gonna do this in semi pseudo code, semi Python code, or whatever, just to get a more broad understanding. So first of all, we want a function that takes in a position of the game and returns the direction you want the snake to move in. Now, this function is going to be recursively called within itself. So it's going to get all the possible moves it can make at a current position of the game. Then call the minimax function on each of those possible moves. And those will return the best direction to move in from that possible direction. And then each of those will run the minimax algorithm on those and so on until you reach a certain depth and in our case we want the depth to be 5 but we want to make sure that the minimax algorithm stops once you get to that depth and because you want to keep track of this depth you want it as one of the parameters in the function so our function um, our function interface would look more like this and it should return the direction now, there are a few things in the return statement. So it can't just return a direction, as in the minimax algorithm, the way you're gonna compare the different, um, the way you're gonna compare the different moves is you're gonna compare the output of the minimax algorithm on those individual branches, right? So on those possible, on the game instances of those, after that move has been done, you run the minimax algorithm on each of those. And because of that, you want to give a score that you can compare. So this will be returning a score and a direction. The score is the score once you, the score that the minimax algorithm finds out is best. All right. If that did not make complete sense, it'll make more sense once we get to actually coding it. So let's do this. So we create a function. Let me just for now call this function. Okay. Now, first of all, we want to do a simple check of the depth. So if the depth is greater than or equal to five, we want to return the current score of the game and a direction that is, well, this direction doesn't matter because, you know, you're not going down any further. So you're just returning game.score actually for the for the purpose of this i'm just gonna reverse these because that's how i've done it in my python code so direction will be none and score will be the current game dot score all right now if the depth is not greater than or equal to five um we'll go on here so first of all you want to create a new copy of the game uh, a new instance of the game after you've done each of the possible moves, right? So we're gonna have, first of all, a possible moves list, and this is gonna be up, down, left, and right. Now, uh, for move in possible moves, we want to, we wanna create a copy of the game. So game copy is equal to copy game. And now this game in this game copy, we want to make that move. So we do the dot turn function, which represents a simple move, a, a single move or a single frame of the game. So game copy dot turn, and you want to do that specific direction, that move, right? So this is going to result in this game copy being an instance of the game after that move is done. So after it's moved up or after it's moved down or left and right. And now again, as we've done before, we want to recursively run the minimax algorithm on this. So we're going to have a, let's call a variable called minimaxed, or let's just do this as n is equal to minimax. And we do this on game copy, and we want to increment the depth. So current depth plus one. All right, so we got that. Now what do we do? Well, we have m and we want to compare all the possible we want to get do the move which results in the greatest score right and what does this minimax function output well it outputs the direction and the score so what exactly do we want to do well first of all let's have a list called scores 
So I'm gonna have a list called scores. And I'm just gonna append to this list. So scores.append. First of all, the move that we're doing. So I'm gonna append, so I'm gonna create a, I'm gonna append a tuple. And the first value in the tuple will be the move that we're doing. And the second value would be the actual score returned by the Minimax algorithm. So the best score that can be achieved by doing that move. So if it's up, uh, if the current move is up, it's gonna run up on the current game instance or on a copy of the game instance, then run the Minimax algorithm once again on that. So it'll keep checking until a depth of five. And then accordingly, the, bet, the score returned by the series of Minimax algorithms so the best score that can be achieved will be returned for for up for the original move up and that will be returned and that will be appended onto the scores list well now we want to choose the highest score from the possible moves right so we're going to get max of possible moves and you want to be doing this um you want to do item is equal to possible move oh sorry you want to get the max of scores apologies you want to get the max of your scores list and you want the item to be scores one and the what i mean by this is that what i mean by this is that scores is actually now a tuple array of the direction so up down left or right and the resultant score of that direction so you want to find the maximum value in scores for the for the actual scores in that array so this is going to be maximum now once you have this maximum this is the best move right so you want to return now we want to return the direction you want the snake to move in as well as the score so the direction is just going to be maximums, um, maximums zero, and then the score is going to be maximum one, right? So maximum zero. Remember our scores array, the scores list has tuples of the direction and the actual score returned by that direction. So this is what you want to return. And just like that, our Minimax algorithm should be a complete, should be complete. Now, recursive algorithms are always quite challenging to really understand and wrap your head on what's going around, perhaps creating a trace table or experimenting with it yourself can help get a better understanding. I'm now going to show you the actual Python implementation of this. Right, let me bring this up here. All right. And yeah, so as you can see over here, uh, let me actually, yeah, as you can see over here, you, we have about the exact same thing. The way we got that maximum value, so we have our scores array, and the way we got that maximum value is first of all, we did a random dot shuffle, which I'll explain br briefly, but then what we did is a sort and our key was x1, so the scores in those tuples, and you said reversed equals true, so you get in descending order. And then the first value, because now it's sorted, scores zero will be that maximum value. And then you wanna return, of course, a tuple of the, the direction and the, and the output score. And yeah. That's about it. Oh yeah, and for this, the reason we did this random dot shuffle is because I noticed that sometimes when the fruit wasn't in view, so if the fruit was more than five cells away, this minimax algorithm would have um, would not have a best an objective move that gives the best score because all of the sequence of moves best scores would always just be zero. So. If it did not have that random dot shuffle, it would just keep alternating between a set of two moves. But adding a random dot shuffle slightly randomizes which 
um, which move the snake decides to go through and accordingly ensures that at a certain, given a certain amount of time, it will eventually be within five blocks of the fruit and then the minimax algorithm will of course trigger and work. And this is of course because the maximum depth the minimax algorithm can look through right now is five. If you increase that or add some optimizations, then you might not need this. All right, well, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.